In this video, we are going to explain conditional navigation in DraftBit. Conditional navigation means directing users to different screens based on certain conditions. For example, whether the user is logged in or not. As an example, if a user is already logged in, they should go straight to the home screen. But if they are not, they should be in the login screen. We call this conditional navigation. And there are a few ways to do this in DraftBit but I'll show you one easy way to get started. I'm going to start by directing users to the login screen first. You can set your app's initial screen in Navigate section in DraftBit. You simply select the root navigator and in the Configs tab, you will see the option for Initial Route. I will set this as Stack Navigator as I nested login screen under that. As an additional step, I need to select the initial route for the Stack Navigator as well. So I'm selecting Stack Navigator, going to the Configs tab, and here in the initial routes, I'll choose Login Screen. Now, when a user opens my app, they will be directed to Stack Navigator. And since initial route of my Stack Navigator is Login Screen, they will be landed on Login Screen. After this quick setup, we need to add some actions on our login screen's on-screen focus trigger. On-screen focus trigger in the interactions tab, as the name implies, if we add some actions on it, then the actions will take place when the screen loads. So this is a perfect place to add a check to see if the user is logged in already. Remember from our previous tutorial, after a user logs in, our backend, in this case Xeno, gives them an auth token. This token is used to authorize the user for certain actions. We store this token in a device variable so we can use it throughout the app. When a user opens the app, the first thing we do is check if there is an authentication token stored on the device. If there is no token, we make them proceed from the login screen. But what do we do if the token is present? One important thing about auth tokens is that they can expire. Although it depends how you set it up in your backend side, generally after a while they expire and become invalid, meaning the user has to log in again. So although there might be a saved token, it can be invalid. In our case, if a token is present, we make a health check on it. If the token is not valid, we make the user stay in login screen for re-authentication. If the token is valid, the user is navigated directly to the home screen. So far so good. But how do we validate the auth token? For that, we will use the authme endpoint. We set this up in our previous tutorial. The authme endpoint sends the auth token to the backend. If the auth token is valid, we get the user's information back like their email or ID, etc. This means the user is still authorized and we will keep them on the home screen. But in case the auth token is not valid, we won't get the user information as a response. So user will remain in login screen. Now let's create our action stack for login screen. We will select the screen component itself and in the interactions tab, we're going to choose on-screen focus trigger. Our first action will be checking the auth token. Remember, we saved it as a device variable. I will drop an if and else action on action editor. And as a condition, I'll choose our device variable. If there isn't any token in the false branch, we do nothing as this will make users stay at the current login screen. In the true branch, now we need to check whether existing token is expired or not. For this, we will use API request action to utilize it for authme endpoint. So I'm selecting authme endpoint. And I'll save the result as authme. In our case, we know that this request will return some information of the user, including their emails, with email key. So we will use email 
as a key path in our subsequent actions. You can use extra key action as well, but I will keep it simple. So I will directly add another if and else action. And in the condition, I'll choose authme.email path. If there is an email information, we will navigate user to the home screen. So I'll add navigate action to the true branch of this if and else action. And the destination will be home screen. As an alternative setup, you could start by directing the user to the home screen first, check for the token there, and then navigate to login screen if they are not logged in already. Both methods work well, but it depends on the flow of your app. Now let's see it in action. Since we haven't logged in yet, we will be staying at login screen. So this is an expected behavior. Now let's log in. I'll just go back to the draft view and then start the session in web preview. There you go. But you know, if you test the setup on your side as well, you might see a login screen in a split second before navigating user to home screen. This is because the actions will take place on screen load. So if you don't want to make logged in users to see instantly the login screen, then you can add a very simple logic to display an activity indicator initially instead of login screen. Now let's do that. In the components section, you can add an activity indicator to your screen. Let's wrap this with a view component. We can control its visibility by setting a variable and use this variable in its data tab at conditional display logic. The screen variable should be a boolean type, true or false. Now let's create that first. It should be a boolean type and initially I'll set this as false. Let's put the screen variable here. When is loading screen variable is true, it will display the activity indicator. When it is false, it will be hidden. Note that we need to use the same variable for the other components on our screen with an opposite logic, of course, because we want to display either activity indicator or our login screen components. So in the conditional display section, of the other components, in our case, it's the keyboard aware scroll view. We will set the same variable, but this time we will be using the operator as doesn't exist. And additionally, in our action stack, we need to configure some additional steps. First, we will add set variable action to the top of our action stack. Here we will choose our screen variable and update its value as true. This will show activity indicator at first. Then the actions will proceed and at the end of the action stack, we will set its value back to false. So we will use another set variable action here at the end of our action stack and again use the same screen variable and set back its value to false. Now let's see the next action. There you go. Now we can see the activity indicator instead of login screen. And that's it for this tutorial. If you haven't set up the off me endpoint yet, check out the link in the description. See you in the next tutorial. Happy building!